this is Christy with Christy Cole Artistry and tonight I'm going to show you how I seal my paintings. Um, I have um, four different sealers that I tend to use on my paintings depending on how, how I want the finished product to, to look. So I'm going to bring you down a little bit and then I'm going to show you a painting I've done and with each of the different um, types of sealers and we'll talk a little bit about them. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back. I have four paintings here and I have um, five different uh, top coats that I use or different types of coatings that I use so I'm going to go through each of them one by one. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Maz Maj Podge. So Maj Podge comes in lots of different um, uh, lusters and you can do lots of different things with Mod Podge. I ch have chosen these two that I like and one is Gloss Luster and the other one is um, Hard Coat. Um, I use these for a lot of my crafting uh, paintings and I also use th this one for sealing a lot of my paintings. So let's look at one of the crafty paintings I'm still working on. So this painting, um, I painted this with Flow Acrylics I let it dry and then I'm working on adding some embellishments on this particular one because I think it'd be great for a children's room or a child's room and right now I've I've gotten the reeds on here and a couple of little frogs. Um, I'm thinking about putting a shelf on the bottom with some additional frogs and turtles and rocks and things but I haven't really finished that yet. But I wanted to show you, I know it's really hard to see this, but I wanted to show you, see if you could see the sheen on what the Maj Podge does. So the Maj Podge also seals these items onto the canvas um, however way you want them. I wanted a few of these to be loose and the rest of them are Maj Podge down. So it's great for crafting. Okay, so that's Maj Podge. Now the next one is Top Coat and Top Coat is a uh, deco art coating um, that I'm going to say it's the closest to resin without being a resin. Um, I use it thinner than what it normally does. Normally you just pour this out of the, the container onto the canvas, um, smooth it around with a palette knife or a uh, spatula, whatever works for you, um, and then you let it dry at a 45 degree angle and it runs all the um, excess off. Well, I found that I can save money by number one, adding a little bit of water to this to thin it out, and number two, brushing it on if I want that brush effect like a varnish would give you, or I use um, sponge brushes. So I buy these cheap sponge brushes and I pour some up here and then I just paint it on. Make sure I get the edges and um, it gives you a really nice luster, hard coat type finish, just not as hard as resin. So I really like um, to use the top coat and that's become one of my, or become my main um, sealer for my paintings. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but this one actually has some sparkle in it. So um, when you seal it with the top coat, it does bring out the sparkles and the colors. Okay, the next one is your average uh, glossy varnish. So varnish is really thin, very watery, and there's a lot of instructions for this varnish. One of the things is when you're using varnish, you cannot use any type of silicone because what will happen is wherever the silicone is on your painting will bubble up and it won't adhere. You can, um, there's a cleaning process for um, after you use the silicone on your, on your canvases so that you can use varnishes. And that happens on these as well. Just seems to happen a lot more with, with varnish. Um, what you do is you have to lay a uh, layer of baby powder on here, you actually rub it in, then you brush it off, then you wipe it off, then you alcohol wipe it off, and then you may have to do it several other times. So to avoid that, I just don't use silicone. If I want to get um, um, cells, I'll just use um, gloss paint, or not gloss paint, I'm sorry, I'll use metallic paints such as uh, the golds, um, or any other actual color that is a metallic paint and they'll bring out these cells just fine. So again, I don't use this as much anymore because I really like the top coat. But here's what the varnish will look like. Now, one thing you can tell is when you paint on varnish, you do get brush lines. But on some of my paintings, I like that. 
because it honestly reminds me of when I was a child and I'd go to the art museum and you'd see the paintings and you could see the varnish on there. Um, sometimes it did crack because the paintings were so old, but sometimes it was just simply the brush strokes. And to me, that just gave it more of a um, handmade feel, I'm gonna say, um, that it wasn't perfect because not everything's perfect and art doesn't have to be perfect. So, um, but this is a good example of a varnish seal that I did. Now, the last one I'm gonna show you um, is resin. And I'm gonna try to move this over. So I'm gonna move this painting out of the way and I'm gonna show you resin. So resin is a hard coat that you apply to the canvas um, by mixing the two um, components in resin. So I use art resin because it's easily available um, here in the United States. I know that uh, in Canada, we'll now ship a product called uh, Crystal Resin with a K, um, but I have enough here to last me a while, so I probably won't need to buy that. And like I said, this is easier to, for me to find. So what you do is you take your hardener and you measure um, how much you, you need. And I normally do several paintings at once when I'm doing resin. Um, just because it's easier to mix up a larger batch for me than it is a tiny batch. So I, I'll mix up, um, you know, a good 18 ounces or so of resin and then I'll put a bunch of paintings out and I will start resining. So you'll do um, half in hardener and you'll do half in the resin and then you'll mix, you'll pour them together in one container. So you need to be aware that when you're pouring in your plastic cups, that you, when you pour them together, you need to have a big enough cup so it doesn't overflow. So what you're gonna do then is you're going to stir the resin and you have to stir the resin for a good three to four minutes or longer, depending on how much you're mixing up. Now, um, one of the things that happens with resin is you always make too much. So I have purchased some resin molds and when I'm resining, I just keep them off to the side and I just pour a little bit, um, you know, whatever's left over when I'm done resining my paintings, whatever's left I pour in the mold and I'm making myself some coasters for the house. So um, it's just nice to have on hand because resin is expensive and you don't want to waste it. So um, again, you mix these two up, you pour them on the canvas. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. You pour them on the canvas and then you're going to um, with gloved hands, you're going to rub the, the, the resin combination around the canvas and you're going to push it off the edges so that you can, you can cover the edges to make sure that everything is covered in a smooth coat. Then with resin, you don't use a blow dryer or your torch. It's, it's not enough. You need to get a heat gun. And I'm sorry I don't have my heat gun right here, but you can get a heat gun at um, Menards or Wal you know, pretty much anywhere. I think even Walmart sells them. But you need a heat gun because what you're going to do um, after you've gotten it spread on the canvas, so say you've got your canvas up like this, it's going to be a little nicer, but you're going to smear it over the sides, you're going to make sure that your sides are covered, and then you're going to use the heat gun to remove the bubbles, just like you did with the paint, only you have to use a heat gun because it has to be hot enough. That heat gun will then also smooth the, um, the resin out so that it will start flowing off the sides. Again, you can do the same thing. You can grab the, the leftover resin, put it back in your cup. So again, resin's expensive, don't waste it. Um, and whatever's left, pour it into your molds for other things. But when you're done, your resin has this beautiful hard coating to it, okay? And sometimes that hard coating, even after you've done everything you can, gets a couple bubbles. So this painting does have a few bubbles in it, but it's still an absolutely beautiful painting. See? And then when you're done with your, um, with your resin, um, what you're going to do is you have to, with resin, you leave the tape on that you have on your, the backs of your canvas and then when you're done you have to um, heat gun them off of there because resin gets hard and in order to pull the tape off you need to um, shoot the heat gun around the edges of the, of the canvas pulling your tape off gently so that you're not pulling the painting off as well. You're going to pull the, that off and you, the backs of your paintings will be clear. 
it'll be beautiful. So resin is wonderful. Um, again, it's it's expensive, it's time consuming, and the one thing that I don't like about using resin on my paintings is if if I'm hanging a painting in a room where there's sunlight coming in or bright lights, a lot of times the resin will reflect the light and you won't be able to see the picture you'll see whatever it's reflecting in so I really like the top coat um, because I like the shininess of the top coat but I also like the um, the uh, gloss that it gives it um, if you notice this is put on with a foam brush and there's no brush lines or anything it's just beautifully shimmery from the top coat and it's sealed so I don't have to worry about it but and and they do come out just as clean you clean the backs make sure your sides are covered and it's I think it looks just as you know it looks beautiful um, so that is all of my sealers